everyone, welcome back. So today we're going to go over how to get some pretty good masking lines. And before we can get into painting the lines, we have to go over masking tape. And what I did first is laid out uh, a few different types that I have on hand. And these are usually accessible to people worldwide. Uh, this would be your standard original masking tape. So what we're going to quickly go over is the adhesion of each tape and how each tape works uh, before we actually paint anything. This is more of a thicker masking tape with a higher adhesion. So this is something you do not want to put on your model or fresh paint. Here we have some vinyl and they come in multiple sizes. This one particularly is from Tamiya and it's in 2 mil. These are great for uh, curves. So if you also notice behind each tape I wrote a number and that stands for the visibility through the tape. So as you see, this vinyl tape here, you can't really see through the tape at all. Whereas each one here goes up from one to four based on visibility. This orange tape, it has pretty good visibility, but I don't usually uh, put it on the model or use it as a border. I usually stick to this orange tape. And to me, it makes it, you make it in multiple sizes with an applicator. The one that I use is the big roll, is this, it's frog tape. Uh, there's a couple other companies that make it out there. It's just, it's great to work with. I highly suggest this stuff here. As you can see, the visibility is uh, the best. So if you're going to use it for a canopy or a windshield, uh, you can put it right on the canopy or windshield and, and um, trace out exactly what you're going to do. So for example, you could use this as an edge, like that. And take it over here. And then recut out that edge. All right. When you're using um, masking uh, tapes of any sort, always try to use a sharp blade, new blade. And then that tape, you can just use it as an edge. So you can use this tape to uh, copy that curve right there and make another one. Um, I have a piece of glass and uh, you could put on the piece of glass and then if you have to cut out strips or uh, 90 degree angles or whatever you need to do, you could also do that. So if, say to me it doesn't make a thin enough strip or uh, whatever the case may be, you could do this. Your angles, do whatever you need to do. Okay. So this this tape here I'm showing you, this frog tape is great. This is what I use a hundred percent of the time on, on the model. Um, if the edge on the actual tape isn't good enough for you, uh, like I just showed you here, you can cut out your own lines and, uh, you know, you could use this as a, a template, essentially. So what we're going to do here is just get, grab some Vallejo acrylic. Basically in every video I do, I use my airbrush. So I want to show you how you can just use, in the first segment, it's going to be using your brush to make a, um, your masking lines and then the second segment it'll be using spray cans so the second segment I already pre-recorded for another video and it's how I just mask the roads for my Abu Dhabi uh, diorama so if you want to watch that uh, video you can learn how to uh, build the whole diorama but uh, the second segment is essentially just going to show you how to use spray cans and the masking tapes I just showed you and now what I did is I drew some flames onto the masking paper, or the masking tape. And you can see, I'm trying to cut away from the tape because if you cut in, you're going to be crinkling it up. That's why I, now I'm cutting to the tip of the flame. Like I said, if I cut into the flame, I would be uh, crinkling the, the tip of the flame up. So always try to cut to your points. I know you're going to have to be cutting backwards and forwards, but uh, that's the name of the game. 
Now if you cut it out properly, you can use both parts of this. You can use literally one as a stencil. Well, one of the biggest secrets I could tell you guys, I learned this ages ago. I love it. It's just a great, uh, it's just a great technique. I don't know why everybody doesn't do it or doesn't show it or what the deal is. But essentially, now that you have your masking tape down, you have to protect your borders because, you know, we have our paint, and that's the blue we already put down. Now on top, we have our tape. There's another piece here. If we put our next color down now, these borders are gonna essentially be contaminated with our new color. So that will increase the chances of getting a run and then having our new color go under our, uh, our mask. So what I try to do is protect our little borders and use the color that we just used, and that's the blue. So when I pull up the blue again, I will grab my brush. And now this stage too, it's essential to just do a light um, coat. Make sure you're, you have all your edges pushed down. Uh, there's a few tools you can do that with, but if you just have a toothpick or a piece of wood, you can do that. And essentially you're going to see all your edges hit the surface and that's what you need. Otherwise, if your borders aren't protected, well, many problems can arise. Okay. So now we're going to grab our original color and protect our little border. Nobody knows it's been done, only us. It's basically, well, I call it a secret line of defense, really. Uh, it's invisible. It's the exact same color we're working with. You have a little area now for your new paint to go on. And it doesn't touch, hopefully. Uh, this isn't 100%, but it does work, you know, 80% of the time, all the time. The thicker your paint during this border process and just general painting determines how uh, runny, well, how diluted your paint uh, will be to increase the chances of it getting under our, uh, our mask. So if you have a really diluted paint, um, so if you say added water to this, uh, that would be considered diluted now. Uh, if I went over this with a new color, the chances of that getting under here are very high. This bordering process here, it creates, like I said, a little surface. So now when we put uh, our new color on top, uh, essentially, like I said, we're just protecting what we originally put down. So this should be dry by now. If it's not, oh well. And what I did is grab some white and red, and I'm going to lightly start doing the borders of these flames here and we'll see what happens. I just used some Vallejo red and white here. Nothing spectacular or special. I'm not doing anything special here. I just want to make it so when you peel the <clears throat> masking tape off, excuse me, um, it just looks like there's various colors going on here and you just don't see that uh, original blue. 
And when I take it off, I always try to pull towards the, the paint, not away from it, at a 90 degree sharp angle. Right. So we'll see what happens here. I, I assume there will be some bleeding. I mean, this is a pretty sloppy hand paint job. But I want to show you that it is very possible and not too hard to do. Pretty good, not too bad. Now I did this in about five minutes. I used the hair dryer to dry my uh, acrylics there. As you see in my following uh, segment coming up using spray cans, um, the lines turn out perfect. But just to show you how you can quickly add some uh, flames, I guess if you want to call these flames. Um, again, using an uh, airbrush or spray cans is much, much more precise. You know, on a scale of one to three, using a brush would probably be a one. And then, uh, Control wise, yeah, you have a three out of three for a brush. Spray can, you're looking at a two, but zero for, out of three for control. And an airbrush would be the best. And three out of three for control. So every time you use an airbrush for this process, you're guaranteed to win. This will say 75% of the time. And this will say the brush 60% uh, of the time. We'll put 99.99% .99 here for that one. So most of my videos you see me use an airbrush that's why in this one I wanted to show you a paintbrush and then now in the next segment we'll go ahead and get into the cans.
So as mentioned before, we use uh, our previous color to protect our borders. And I mainly do that because uh, of drying time. Alternatively, you can also use a clear coat. Like um, if, you st if you're using an acrylic paint, then you stick with an acrylic clear coat because that way they dry uh, consistently and they're basically the same chemicals. If I were to hit this with a lacquer, uh, first of all, I'd have to make sure this is 100% dry. Then I'd hit it with a lacquer. Uh, then once the lacquer's dry, then I could proceed to my following color. Uh, yeah, that takes a long time. It could take days before you get to your next color, but the benefit in that is when you have a bleed or something, you could just use a solvent or thinner to erase that. You don't have to go back to your previous color. So when you use a lacquer base or any, any clear coat, you're basically protecting the first color you did. It's in computer terms, it'd be like saving your project. Uh, that way, if you make an error, you could take off essentially the next layer because your clear coat is uh, that border. All right. So hopefully you guys learned something today. And uh, if you like what you saw, please like and subscribe. And I have very many other videos coming and already published. So if you guys are interested in models and uh, other tips and tricks and techniques, Check out my other stuff. Thanks, guys.